David Weiss is the, um, we call him Flat Earth Dave. He's a businessman, a podcaster, and most importantly, a flat earther. Now, Dave, I, I don't have to say this to you because you've probably heard it a million times. When people say that they're a flat earther, it's like the, it's like you just cast them into hell and there's really, there's no credibility. They're complete morons. Nobody can ever take them seriously. It's the most ridiculous thing you could ever claim. In fact, it's now used as a, a well understood term for derision and, and, and ridicule. And I'm sure that you have this all the time. You, you proudly go by Flat Earth Dave, though, so you clearly don't care about whether people uh, believe you or not. You've got, your, you've got your understanding. And one of the things I want to try to do during this conversation is just understand how someone like you who is, you're not, a, you're not a loser who's living in your parents' basement and who's never been able to do anything useful in your life. You know, how you manage to reconcile a belief like this, which modern science and everybody who is anybody tells you is completely unfounded how you can have a belief like that and lead the life that you lead. So first of all, tell, wow. us about, tell us about you. I mean, let me hear about you and your background and where it all comes from. Garrett, that's a lot to unpack there. So many <laughs> things you said are true and so many things are just beliefs. And we'll get into how belief is the enemy of knowing. About me, normal businessman, grew up on the East Coast, still live on the East Coast, worked in corporate America, started my own company with a couple partners, uh, doing extremely well, walked away from the entire thing to spread this message because you're going to get to the point in our conversation, you're going to go, well, why? Why the lie? Why would they lie? We'll cover mm -hmm. that at the end. So let me know when we're near the end okay. and um, we'll get into that. And because this is the most important secret of the elite, um, bar none. So let's find out why crazy this crazy guy thinks the earth is flat. And when you say all science um, you know, shows that the earth is a spinning globe, actually, there's no science. There's only pseudoscience. And I was you six years ago. Everything you said, I believed. Everything. All right. Now, I'm, I'm going to resist the temptation to jump in and, and say to you, oh, well, you know, we can see the shadow of the moon, the sh shadow yeah. of the earth on the moon. And I'm going to resist the temptation to say that we've sent up satellites that map the planet <laughs> and that that you can you could see how time works on longitude and you, oh you know, all of those things i'm sure you have an argument for each of them but i i want you to know that i i have been in trouble before for allowing conspiracy theorists to say what they think and i don't mind getting into trouble again so let us hear why right. on earth why on earth let's cut straight to the chase why would you believe that the earth is flat well because all there's there's zero proof of the globe and there's tons of proof of flat earth um, let me just say for anyone listening now that's ready to hit that tune out button, I'm offering a Bitcoin for one proof of the globe, just one. And I'll, I'll show you how you can claim that just one. So here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> people that from your position, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not looking down upon you because I was you, everyone was you. Um, we all grew up thinking the earth is a globe, but what you think flat earth is, is not what we have discovered. We don't think flat earth is a, a disc floating in space with other heliocentric balls or even other flat planets. That's not the, that's not the case at all. If you Google flat earth, you're going to get images from like this, from the flat earth society, right? None of, none of, nobody believes that the earth is a disc floating in space. None of that is true. So if that's not true, what is the earth? Well, the best way I describe it is the earth is like a pond. A pond is where water accumulates at the low spot on the land and the surrounding edge of the pond is where the land is higher than the water. Large bodies of water at rest lay flat. <clears throat> all of the world's oceans create this world pond. All of the continents, all of the islands are surrounded by water, but all of the water is surrounded by land. That land is known as Antarctica. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. They, that's what science says. They don't teach you that in school, though. It's the highest land on Earth. It is the container of the world pond. So what is out here, out in the outer space of Antarctica? Well, that's all, um, that's all for, that's a good thing. That, that's a good question, because, but nobody's allowed to go out there. And we can get into that, but we don't have a ton of time. So that's the start of what Flat Earth is. So why do I think that... Uh, that the earth is flat because one, we can see too far. And the other thing is, the other thing that people like yourself is they don't even understand what the heliocentric model is. So in the heliocentric model, the globe model, um, you believe that the earth is, do you Orbit know how fast it's spinning? Orbit do you know how fast it's spinning? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but the earth is rotating. Yeah. I didn't, by the way, I didn't know any of these answers. 
No, I don't know. I don't know by how. So it's how, how, spinning yeah. at a thousand miles an hour. So that means when you're watching the sunset that you believe you're on top of a ball falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound. While that's going on, you're orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. You're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour. And that entire system is moving sideways at 1.2 plus or minus million miles per hour. But, some, but somehow, you know, on the world, every, you, you don't notice any motion at all. We have lakes that are perfectly glass, even though mainstream science, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the actor, um, says because of the spin of the earth, the water bulges 14 miles high at the equator. Well, does this look like bulging water to you? These lakes at, you know, at rest lay perfectly flat. We can measure too far. We can see too far. If the earth is 24,901 miles around, like they say, there's a curvature formula, not flat earth formula, globe earth formula, which is eight inches per mile squared, which means that at just, at just three miles, there should be six feet of drop. At 10 miles, there should be 66 feet of drop, right? So what I did when I started seeing all of these videos of things that are beyond, what, that should be hidden behind a curve, I went out and bought a $1,000 camera and tripod, super zoom, and I started zooming in on things. Here is a oil platform that we know is 9.4 miles away, scientifically provable. There should be 59 feet of curvature when viewing from one foot off the ground, which this camera is. Not only can we see the entire thing, we can see the water for dozens of miles beyond it. We have hundreds of videos of these, of doing laser tests, microwave tests, um, all sorts of, you know, just mirror flashes of, of the sun. We can see too far. So you have two choices. One, the earth is a thousand times bigger than they tell us or it's flat. All right, let's just take baby steps here. So, so you're not only yes. saying that we're inside, we're on a bunch of essentially islands on the inside of the Antarctic basin and that what's beyond that is, is more land as far as you're concerned. Um, we don't know what's beyond it. There could be nothing. Well, it could be, it could be uh, well, you know, there could be a dome. Uh, haven't many people already been to the South Pole? No, they haven't. There, there, there's a bunch of people that claim they have, and and if you look at their trips, um, they they haven't. Like for example, the there billions of people have circumnavigated the Earth, um, going east or west. Like if I leave New York um, and I travel east, I'm traveling in a circle. Okay, what, how, well, wait a minute. What do you mean you're traveling in a circle? If I'm going east, I'm trying mm. to find a video as I talk. If so, <clears throat> so. At the center of the flat earth, at the center of the pond is a magnetic mountain. There's a magnetic force there. And you put your compass down, the compass always has to point to that mountain. So if I leave you know, the United States and I'm heading west, I have to keep turning to head west. So a circle is 270 degrees west. A circle is 90 degrees east. And if I keep following that, my compass, and I think I'm going straight, I'm going in a circle because my compass always right. has to point here. So what nobody has ever done is if you try to dead reckon west or east and you don't correct to the north, you're immediately going south. Nobody has gone from Santiago, Chile, and popped up over in Australia. It's never been done, okay? It's never been done. Why, you know, billions of people have circumnavigated around the world, but nobody's gone from Santiago straight across. Now, people say, well, you can't fly over Antarctica because we'll disturb the penguins. Okay, just fly around it. But that's not how flights go. When you wanna fly um, from Santiago, here, I got a better one for you. If you wanna go from Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires, am I saying that right? Yeah, Buenos Aires, yeah. When Buenos Aires, major city, to Perth, another major city. Well, this is the straightest, fastest way. But again, they don't want to disturb the penguins. So you have to kind of go around Antarctica. That would be the shortest trip. But the actual flight paths are quite different. They go one way, they go, they go all the way up to, they stop in Miami or Houston, then they stop in LA, then they stop in Sydney, then they fly to Perth. Other times they go from here to Europe, to Singapore, to Perth. That's because they're at opposite ends of the world pond, right? They're not underneath the ball like the globe would show us. Or, These or, are the actual flight paths. Or it could be because that's where the passengers are. No, no. There, these are people that want to fly. There's no picking up, no new passengers. These are people that want to fly direct. 
Um, there's plenty of flights that go from Santiago direct, and the, the flight path they take is very much the same. So, right. okay, so so I, what I'm ahead. doing, I'm trying really. I, I want to give this a full go. I mean, this this whole flight path thing does interest me because, as far as I yeah. know, you're 100 percent right about the fact that no one flies. Let me show you. Let me show you one more. Let me show you one more. Yeah, oh, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. So real quick. So NASA is in charge of all the flight paths of, uh, you know, and they're in charge of GPS and everything, which is a whole other story. Here's a flight from Singapore, uh, from Taiwan to LA, and it's flying right across. Here's Hawaii. And right about here, there was an emergency, a medical emergency, and the plane needed to land. If you're the pilot, you'd probably land in Hawaii. Maybe you'd continue. But instead, the plane went all the way up to Alaska. Why did it go all the way out of the way to Alaska? And the answer is because this is the real fl flight route. Taiwan, emergency. Alaska, it's right there. So there's, there's a book called 16 Emergency Landings that prove Earth is flat. Every single one of them makes zero sense on the globe. They all make perfect sense on a flat Earth. It's free online. You can just look it up, PDF version, or you can buy it on Lulu. Dave, you're not a, you're not a, a member of the Flat Earth Society. You Flat Earth Society is a government-controlled disinformation site, like I taught you. If you, like I told you at the beginning, if you look up Flat Earth, you're going to get delivered right to the Flat Earth Society because right. the Flat Earth Society, Obama plugged it a dozen, half a dozen times in his speeches. Tell me, tell me about NASA and and Disney because you also say there's a link between those. You say NASA sets the the flight paths. NASA NASA's pretty much lying to us about everything. Explain to me how, how you come to that conclusion and what you think NASA's job really is. Yeah, so we well NASA's job is to see, deceive people and make people believe that the Earth is uh, that we can walk on balls, right? But we, we'll we'll be watching them, you know, do a live uh, thing from the space station. These guys are flipping their stuff around, hanging from wire, just flipping you know CGI um, augmented reality objects around their microphone, their hat, and way in the background, this guy goes floating by. So I zoom in. You can barely see him on the video, but I zoom in. We could see the harness and the wires. This guy is floating by hanging from wires. There's times where they're doing flips and they get tangled in their wires and they have to grab the other guy's wire to set to straighten them out. There, there's times where the wires break and they, they have all these problems and they always cut away. They just cut away back to, um, back to mission control. You know, there's times where everything that's floating all of a sudden glitches out, you know, there, and, and everything that's not floating doesn't glitch out. There's times where they're floating by, this is on a zero G plane and there's no right hand turns on a zero G plane. He becomes transparent before he goes around the corner. Look, you can see right through his body. This is all done with, you know, this is all done with camera tricks. It's all nonsense. Why? And people just believe it. Look at this guy, watch, watch this thing on the wall. You can see right through his head. This is all done with green screens on zero G planes. There was even one time where um, Chris Hatfield was singing. He loves playing his guitar in space. This guy's holding the microphone. They're in separate rooms, right? Mm. And, and one camera's upside down. And he's holding the microphone and misplaces where Chris is and sticks it into his neck. And then when they noticed that, they quickly changed it. NASA quickly pulled down the video, but we have it. We captured it. Stuck the microphone in his head. Right, so this why, happens all why the time. Would, why would the government... Because uh, I'm I'm conscious of time here, and there's a lot to take in. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the moon. You, you, what's the moon? I don't know what the moon is, and, and neither does nobody does. The moon is not a physical object. It it looks to be spherical, but looking at the lights in your ceiling and describing the shape of your floor is no way to prove the shape of your floor. Um, the moon is not a physical object. It's more, you know, everything we see in the sky. I don't think there's anything um, terra firma, anything physical up there. So. What is the moon? That the moon's the biggest mystery of all. All right, so so let's cut to the chase here. If I'm going to take this seriously, there has to be a like in a in a in a, a crime. There has to be an intention. There has to be some reason yeah. why someone would try to keep this from us. And I mean, we've been circumnavigating the globe. We've been exploring the Earth. We've been mapping the Earth for thousands of years. This is not something that some major well, power could have had oversight over for the entire of in a, in the entire story of human history. Explain to me how. Yeah, well, then how you think it's possible that that governments or whoever it is that's doing this is is able to convince us and why they would yeah. do it 
All right. So the two questions, I'll answer both of them. One is uh, they're lying about everything. In the 1920s, everyone on earth knew the earth was flat. In America, they taught flat earth in public schools all the way into the 1920s. In Croatia, all, all the way through the 1930s, right? There, we found newspaper articles in the New York Journal, which is now the New York Times, in the, in the early 1900s about teachers being persecuted for trying to teach heliocentrism. When the iPhone came out, this was the, the picture that was on everyone's iPhone. It's called the blue marble, right? And uh, the, NASA admits it's fake. The, the guy that made it, in, in, that works for NASA, he, in an interview, he said he made it in Photoshop from strips of data. Then 10 years later, they come out with this picture. United States is twice the size. Now, the globe apologists will go, well, that's just because it's a different angle. And no, it's nonsense. Because if we look, we can measure across Mexico and Baja, and we can scientifically prove ourselves verifiable that it's 934 miles. NASA tells us the diameter of the Earth is just less than 8,000 miles. I should be able to fit eight and a half of these between these two lines. I can't even fit them on this page. Okay, so that proves another painting. They show us a picture of Pluto. It happens to have a desert shaped like Pluto. They show us a picture of, of Jupiter. Two and a half years later, they take another picture of Jupiter. They say, look, we, we photographed the Northern Lights. That proves there's a magnetic center, but none of the clouds change. It's the exact same picture. The lazy liars at NASA that get $65 million a day couldn't even make a new picture. OK, so they're faking everything. Not it's not like he's saying it's fake. We can prove it's all fake. All of the rocket launches are fake. Everything they do is fake. And it's all to perpetuate the lie. Why the lie? So is the, why the lie is the big question. And the question and the answer is because they want you to believe that you are an insignificant speck flying through an infinite godless or distant God universe where an asteroid could take you out at any second where where you're running out of dinosaur juice for your cars, your, the nuclear bombs could take us out at any moment. Um, they want you living in fear to give up your divinity. They don't want you to know that you are at the center of creation, that you are a powerful spiritual being having an experience here with a spark of God in you, your soul. And they want to steal your soul with the soul lure system. Right. Sounds a little crazy, but they want you thinking that they have dominion over you and that they can control you. They can't put a fence around you. They can't put a fence around your yard, around your country, around the they can't put a fence anywhere because humans are like, you can't put a fence up here. I'm going on the other side of that fence. So what they did is they put our mind in a prison and that mind prison is the is the globe. Right. There's no fence. It's an invisible fence. What if beyond Antarctica, there was more land, other continents? Right. What if there was extra terra, more territory, extra terra. What would come from extra terra? Extra terrestrials. If this is the inner space, this is the outer space. NASA is trying to go to outer space to find extra terrestrials. They're right here on the earth plane, okay? The lie is the most important thing. People, people, you know, years ago, everyone knew the earth was flat, but everybody was, you know, we were basically serfs for the elite. And now people are taking the industrial revolution came, people are getting more power, people are, you know, getting more influence. And now they're, they're, they had to hide the truth of this world because the truth of this world is nobody has dominion over us. We just have to follow God's law, which is don't kill, don't steal, don't interfere with anyone's free will and help your neighbor. That's it and maintain control of your soul. Don't lose control of your soul. That's our whole mission here. Maintain control of our soul for our entire lives here on earth. I find all of this really interesting. And, and again, I'm gonna keep an open mind through this. I, I'm interested in your point of view on nuclear bombs. You mentioned them briefly there and, and on, on Kim Jong-un. Just give us your theory on those while we're talking about things that you believe in. Yeah, yeah. real quick though, if you try to Google flat earth, you're not gonna find Find it. You're not going to find it at all. You're going to get disinformation. Hey, top 10 reasons the earth is flat. You're going to get top 10 reasons the earth is a globe. You're going to get government planted um, videos by, you know, by just shills yeah. Look, um, no, just no trying to control of, your I'm mind. I'm a fan of Google. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that front. Yeah. I also do believe so, that the internet's become as much a source of information as, as a source of disinformation. So I'm, I'm- Yeah, well, it's just like the world. There's disinformation and there's good people, there's bad people. You just gotta sort it out yourself. So sure. YouTube is a place of just holds information. How you, they, they shadow ban the good information. So I created this app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Every day it serves you a new video. It has the top 21 questions. It shows yeah. you how seasons work. It shows you how, how everything works. Um, All right, we're, we're going so, to take a look. All right. 
So, um, so, so tell me about you, t- um, tell me about nuclear bombs and tell me about Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Yeah, so first, nuclear bombs don't exist. It's all, uh, it's all just fear. Uh, and people say, what about Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Well, there's video of, um, na- of uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima of them stacking up bombs, stacking up, not bombs, um, TNT, skids and skids and skids of TNT. After the bomb went off, right? Nuclear bombs, radiation, it wipes out everything. It's horrible, right? Three days later, the trains were running, the sandwich shops were open, they were selling flowers on the street, and everybody was back to work. Three days later, okay? And then there was only one reporter, one reporter in the entire world that was allowed to take pictures and send and write articles. Anyone else that took a picture or wrote an article about what was going on there was jailed. That is just, that's unbelievable. Just think about that. So it was all controlled. Um, all of the buildings that didn't that had fireproofing survived, except right at ground zero where the bomb went off, right? It was an incendiary bomb, right? If you look at, you know, we were all shown in school what happens to a nuclear bomb, that little house blows up and the trees bend over. Well, one, there's so many things wrong with that, but look at it with 2020 eyes or 2021 eyes, and you'll see that it's a little miniature. It's a claymation model. It's, it's nonsense. And if you look at it, the, the explosion comes from behind the camera, the explosion comes from behind the camera. It's all nonsense for your mind. It's all to control you with fear. I'm, I'm in a park the fact that there are many thousands of Japanese people who lost actual relatives. In, in- oh, absolutely. Many people died. It was a huge, um, massive bomb. It was a fire bombing. But if you look at, like, um, where was it, Taiwan or wherever they did carpet bombing, it, the damage looks the same as the nuclear bombs. Many people died. But there's no, and if, if you blow up a firecracker, there's radiation left after the firecracker goes off. So after you blow up 100,000, you know, sticks of TNT, what, what, there's radiation, about, but it about, quickly uh, dissipates. What about Kim Jong-un? Kim Jong-un is, have you ever seen him say anything intelligent? All you do is you see him in front of a green screen clapping, right? And then behind him, they got missiles and troops. <laughs> Zoom in on those troops and they're stepped and repeated. They're the same ones again and again and again. Kim Jong-un is just a, a, I think he's from a mental institution and they just pull him out when they need him to smile and clap. And, and what do you think? I mean, is, is there really a North Korea and what's really going on there if it isn't Kim Jong-un's kingdom? Yeah, very, very good. Very good question. There, there's um, some very few videos come out of North Korea, but there's a building in North Korea that's taller than the, than the World Trade Towers are, right? That were, and it, it's, it's a building that's left over from the Tatarian Empire, right? And it's still there in North Korea. Have you ever heard about it? The what empire? The Tatarian Empire. Tataria was a worldwide civilization, uh, advanced technology here worldwide in the 1800s, okay? The world, go look into the world's fairs, and you'll see that um, it, uh, it, it was uh, literally a takeover from the Tatarian Empire. Everything before the 1900s that you have been told is a lie. Every single thing. The Wild West is a lie. It's all lies to control your mind. Um, if you want to learn about the Tatarian Empire, here, here's sure. my app real quick. I'll yep. hit the web button and up comes uh, a bunch of links. The bottom right, yeah. it says Mud Floods Tataria. Did you know that the Cran- Transcontinental Railroads were not built? They were excavated? No. Yeah, they were excavated. Look into the mud floods. If, by the way, if you click that button, bring food and water. Let me show you one more thing that might actually push you over the edge, not the edge of the flat earth, but over the edge going, this guy might be onto something. You ready? Let me show you how seasons, seasons work. So right. where are you? Where are you located? South Africa. So you're in South Africa. My mouse right about yep, here. You're you right. way south. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're, the height of your summer is in January or the December, right? Correct. Okay, so right now, the sun is here. The red line is the equator. The yellow line, the inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer, and the Mm -hmm. outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn. So right Right. now, the sun, it migrates every six months between those lines. Mm -hmm. So if I jump the sun forward to July, uh, June, June, July, it's over the Tropic of Cancer, and it's over the United States. See how close it is to the United States? Right. So that's because we're having our summer, because the sun is high in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. And then- it's for you, it's, it's, it's farther away. Right. The sun is farther away, so it's lower in the sky because it's farther away. If you saw an airplane directly over your head and another one 20 mm-hmm. miles to the, you know, 200 miles to the north or 50 miles to the north, whatever, it's lower in the sky. Even though it looks, it's at the same height, it's lower in the sky. It's farther away. So that's how seasons work. So if I, That's also if I, true for a rounder. 
No, well, the round earth, here's something crazy. The round earth is during, during the northern summer, we're farther from the sun. And during the northern winter, we're closer to the sun in the heliocentric model. Makes no sense, okay? If I jump, if I jump this out to, um, to December, and now the sun is out over Australia. They're having their summer. I'm having my winter because it's farther away. The sun's all the way over here for me. It's going to come right around. It's going to go right over you in December. You're having your summer. Sun is higher in the sky. It's closer. That's it. Take a heat lamp, hold it over your face, well, and then tilt it to I the mean, side. We have our summer at the same time as Australia. Yeah, yeah. Because look, the sun goes around here. But you have your daytime, you know, eight hours later than, or earlier than them. Right. It's, you know, it's, if I You're turn on the it, moves, time zone, it means between those two tropics, it moves in between the two tropics. So right now it's uh 4 PM. Is it 4 PM for you? Yeah. It's about 4 PM. Right. Mm -hmm. And in Australia, it's around 11 at night, midnight on Eastern Australia. Okay. And, and so if I turn the, if I turn that back on, um, and I turn the stars on mm -hmm. the stars rotate around with the sun but they go slightly faster than the sun so the sun will they only lap the sun once a year so the sun will hang out in this tropic are you, are for you, about a month i mean there are people there are there are people even some that i know who are professors of astronomy these people have dedicated their entire lives to study yeah. the observable universe and you're saying yeah. that your theories that you've you've come up with and maybe some other people that agree with you you're saying that they're all discredited and that you're the only one who's figured it out no, there's plenty well, of people that know the earth well, is flat. Well, but the, well, the, the, someone's paying them to lie? I mean, but. no, absolutely not. They're the ones that memorize and regurgitate. You know, I could take a telescope and look at a distant tiny dot and zoom in on it with a telescope, just like I can with a microscope uh, onto a cell of a leaf or something. And I could make up a whole story about they, that. They memorize and regurgitate. You. You're not giving them any credit for being inquiring minds themselves. No, they're, 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 they're inquiring, the, but they're, they don't have any proof for any of the stuff that they're saying. Like uh, science says that the sun is 93 million miles away. Well, the, the way they figured it out was, is they said one day Venus, which is the same size as Earth, uh, transited the sun and they watched when it stopped and started from different coasts and it started and stopped at different times. They did some math. Well, that's nonsense. I say Venus is the size of a basketball and you can't prove me wrong. But we can prove that the, that the sun, that the stars are not the distances that they say. We can scientifically prove it, but people just don't want to take the time and look at it. And aliens, you say that's extraterrestrial. So that's in the earth that's outside of the, the ice wall. That if, if, if extraterrestrials are real, which I believe they are, um, they're coming from a very short distance where literally they can come, you know, they have breakfast with their wife, come over here, abduct somebody, probe them and then go back for dinner. Dave, you're a fast rather than Trav 20. So wait, just think about this. The closest star is 25 trillion miles away. Yeah. How long do you think one trillion seconds is? No, well, I mean, a light year, a, a light year, it's going to take you um, several lifetimes to get to that closest star. Yeah, yeah. So where do where do extraterrestrials come from the through infinite space or just across the plane? A couple thousand miles? Well, I mean, do you do you keep up to date with the the, the 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 latest literature on you know wormholes and 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 singularity? It's all pseudoscience. It's all pseudoscience. All of it. It's all pseudoscience. There's and, no and, proof of it. You're just making up stories. And you figured it out. I didn't figure it all out, but uh, you know, when when they tell you about wormholes and and the gravitational wave that they measured, which is like uh, um, it's like a fly flapping its wings on the other side of the Earth, and they measured it somehow, it, it, it's all pseudoscience. None of that is real. It's all made up pseudoscience, prison for your mind. When they when they say stuff okay, like so that, I look at them, I go, so "Cool we, story, bro." If if we all reached the 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 kind of enlightenment that you have, um, what is the it, what is not a, no, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm, please understand, I'm not being insulting. Uh, when we reach a point where we understand things the way that you do, how does our life improve? And wh what do we learn about ourselves? How, how, yeah. how, how much better off are you, if you if you manage to, you know, accept the things that you're telling us? Yeah, great question. Um, I realize that I have great power that, that nobody has dominion over me. I realize how important I am. I realize that I'm part of the earth system, not the soul lure system. Um, I, I really, I've taken charge of my own life and I'm able to use my mind to manifest what I want. They don't want you to know that your thoughts create your reality. Everything you have in your life, 
is created by the way you've thought throughout your life. You've brought your world around you with your thoughts. They don't want you to know that your thoughts are literally magical and that your thoughts create your reality. People that live their lives paycheck to paycheck, struggling, live their lives that way because that's what they believe, right? There's people that make millions and millions of dollars and then they lose millions and millions of dollars and they're millions in debt and then they gain it back again. And the other guy is still just struggling paycheck to paycheck when needing another $10 to pay his bills, right? It's all on how you think. My life has changed ama amazingly. I no longer, I, I had my own business um, and you know, I was busy making high six figures, walked away from it all happier than could be. I'm around the, the people that I've uh, met with, you know, when we go to conferences, they're, uh, it's just amazing people. If I dropped a wad of hundred dollar bills there, somebody at the conference would return it to me. I, I think that's, listen, this is really, really mind bending stuff. And, and I don't, um, I don't doubt that there are many people who will ri ri ridicule and mock you even for the things that you are, you're convinced you have proof of and that you'll try to convince them of. How do you well, respond? How do you respond to those people who are just out and out? You know, they just say you're a, you're a, you're a lunatic. I say, is that your best proof of the globe? Like, I'll ask you right now, what's your number one proof of the globe? Just give me one proof of the globe and let me respond to it. And then, you know, if you want to wrap it up, we can wrap it up. What's, well, what's I mean, your number one proof of the globe? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, there's, there's infinite amounts of, of physical evidence of the four forces of, of the universe, you know. The, name the, one. The small name, nuclear, you have to name the, one specifically. The nuclear. No, no, there's, so gravity. Let's talk about gravity for a second. Yeah. I mean, so, gravity. So gravity. Are you are you aware of the three body problem? The the so we're the, so our sun. Here's our sun, and it's holding on to the Earth, falling around it. And it's holding on to Mars, which goes farther, and Saturn, and Jupiter, hmm. and Pluto. It's holding on to all of these, but all of the planets themselves are holding on to their own moons, and yes. everything's going around, and and nothing ever affects anything. When our moon comes in between the sun and the Earth or it's coming around the earth towards the sun, don't you think it would speed up a little bit when it tries to go away from the sun? The sun's gravity would slow it down a little bit. How come the sun doesn't pull it away, right? And the answer, the only answer that Globers give is like, well, because the earth is holding onto it and the sun's gravity doesn't affect it. Well, that's nonsense. So the three body problem is this. You take the world's best supercomputer and you make a model and you say, okay, I got a sun, it's got this much uh, gravity, like a little planet, it's got this much gravity. You set them in orbit and it works beautifully like a perfect timepiece. It'll go for, you can predict where it's gonna be in a thousand years or 10 hours or whatever. It works perfectly. Then you add one more body to it. One moon, one, pl one planet, put it in that, model and the entire model goes into chaos mode right it goes into chaos mode never repeats again right they can't even model fake gravity so what is gravity well that's the that's a big question we live in a free energy system right the sun and the moon are the anode and cathode of the battery the salt water which has tides the other water doesn't carries the current and the land is the salt bridge of the battery if you know how a battery works so the, the earth has a measurable negative charge to it, testable, measurable, scientifically provable, not a theory, and it has a negative charge to it. When you lift off the earth, there's voltage in the air. At one meter, there's 100 volts. Two meters, there's 200 volts. There's free energy everywhere. Tesla proved it. He's probably from Tataria. Um, and, uh, and so... So you have that, that, that difference in, uh, in charge. So anything that's off the earth, the earth has a negative, the earth doesn't move at all. So it says down is this way. It has a weak force, just like are, they say gravity is people, a weak force. Are people trying to shut you down? Are people actively, are there, are there people who are trying to stop you from, from talking about this stuff? Have you experienced They it? don't try to stop us. They try to, they try to out shout us with, uh, with their nonsense. Like, you know, there's a guy named By Man Dan, who is a government shill who just makes straw man arguments and gaslights us and does a weekly video every week. And all of his arguments are dumb. And, and Neil deGrasse Tyson will make video after video after video, make in front of flat earthers, but he'll never talk to us. Neil deGrasse Tyson says the science is settled. Well, no, science is never settled. That's why it's called science. Science is based on new information to, the, you know, to get rid of a theory. The globe is a theory. Gravity is a theory, right? And uh, you know, finishing with the, with the attraction of the earth, buoyancy and density sort everything else out. You have a handful of rocks, a handful of ping pong balls, and you drop them over a body of water. They both fall through the air because they're more dense than the air. The ping pong balls stay on top of the water. The rocks go to the bottom because one's more dense, one's less dense. And buoyancy and density sort everything else out. Down is down for me. Down is down for someone in Australia. It's not up. 
Down is down for everybody. Up is up for everybody. Forward and backwards, left and right are relative to your position. Dave, I, I, listen, you, you, you've definitely got me thinking. I can't agree with you more about the fact that there is no such thing as settled science. Science is ever evolving. And when new information well, comes in, you have to incorporate it. So I think for anybody who's curious about this stuff, I'm very happy that we've, we managed to get you to spend some time with us and to, and to share your ideas. And I, I hope that there is more and more proof for your, for your theories, just as I, so, I, I would like there to be more proof of, of all the, the science that we consider settled today. Yeah. So, I'm afraid, so my, I'm my out of time though, we, we got to wrap this up. Just, my, my final word is, uh, is take the flat earth app challenge. Watch the daily video every day for two weeks. Right. And if you think you have one proof of the globe, I'll give you a Bitcoin. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a deal. We'll hold you to it. If anyone can, can do that, then that's what's close to $50,000, just a little bit more right now. It's so that's 55, you're not playing 55. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. What a pleasure to meet you and, and good luck. I mean, this is really interesting stuff. I, I, I do think it's been a, a, a worthwhile couple of minutes. We've learned some things. Thank you. And belief is the enemy of knowing it's easy to believe knowing takes time, effort and, yep. and, uh, and time and effort. So, FlatEarthPodcast.com, the Flat Earth Podcast, the Flat Earth Podcast Instagram. Uh, that's where you can find me. I, I, you, you haven't convinced me, but I'll, I'll keep an open mind. I, if I convince you, I would say that, you, that, you, that you're crazy. You, you need to look into yourself. I'm just pointing towards some doors that you didn't know oh. were there, and now you can see them. Now the choice is up to you, whether you want to remain in uninformed or be right. willfully uninformed. Well, thank right. you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Dave. Very good to see you. Thank you. The Flat Earth Sun and Moon Clock App. A dynamic new app to teach family and friends about where they actually live. The sky is a perfect clock. The sun measures the hours and days. The moon measures the weeks and months. The star constellations measure the seasons and years. 12-12 or 24-hour clock face. Or go hands-free. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app with new added features. World Time. See what time it is all around the Flat Earth. A true Earth compass that shows true navigation across and around the Flat Earth plane. Weather. Tap for detailed local weather information. Know what phase and where the moon is at all times. Watch the sun travel between the tropics for the seasons. Select an amazing background. Add your own or have the app change it to a new one automatically every time you use the app. Add a countdown to your next big date. Learn the truth about our world with the featured video of the day. Web button for additional flat earth related features from the mythical curve calculator all the way to Tartaria. While talking to friends, easily pull up pictures that expose the globe lie and shine light on the flat earth truth. Video playlists in different languages. See the real trade winds circling the flat earth and clean screen features. Simply click off the items you don't wish to see. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app is the best tool to show your friends and strangers how our flat earth actually works. <laughs>